Thank you, Artemis. Uh, hello, everybody uh, who, who are on the panel. Now we're going to speak about uh, digital and program growth. We have here in this panel uh, two presenters, uh, two speakers. Uh, it's Dr. Uh, Professor Philip Sandler, Sandler and Pavel Kravchenko. Uh, and also me, Odrys Kabashinskas from Konos University of Technology. I will moderate this talk and uh, Let's uh, start our discussion. So, Professor S uh, Sander, uh, what is the main uh, task in this, uh, in this area and what are the main issues which we, we want to uh, talk about? Yeah, so the topic is digital programmable euro. So first let's, let's clearly define what it is. Um, if we talk about the digital euro, then I would assume that we would like to have the euro on top of a blockchain network running. Um, this can be a public network. Then, for example, this is Ethereum. This would be the euro on Ethereum. It could also be a permission network in the future. Then this would be, for example, Libra, Facebook's project Libra. This would be the euro on top of Libra. It could be a network of banks, a consortium, such that the euro runs on top of this permission network. Uh, or there are also any other variants. Um, the ultimate variant would be that the central bank, uh, in our case, then the European Central Bank, is providing an infrastructure such that the euro will run on top of it, but this will take a couple of years. So we already know that China, with their project there for running their local currency on a blockchain network, that is this China project is called DCEP, that they are approximately six to eight years ahead in comparison to the European Central Bank. This is quite shocking, and, uh, but uh, that's basically how it is. The question is always, do we need the digital programmable euro? Um, and if so, then I think uh, we here in Europe should urgently take action uh, to get the euro on a blockchain network. And the key point here is, why would we need a digital euro? First of all, cross-border transactions would be much more efficient. Um, second, uh, we could have the so-called Internet of Things, such that devices, autonomous cars, machines, and so on, can also transact euro, like little profit centers, for example. Then we could have the integration with other assets, other services, and other tokens, in case you have a DLT network where the euro is running, and next to the euro there are other tokenized assets, rights, services, identities running, then you can basically exchange value between these rights that product, services, and so on within a couple of seconds. That's basically in the financial area called delivery versus payment, which currently takes a couple of hours or days such that transaction finality is achieved, whereas uh, on a DLT network, transaction finality could be achieved within a couple of seconds. Uh, and all these are, in my mind, reasons why we need the digital program of the euro. The industrial companies need it, for example, Bosch, Daimler, and, and other companies who would like to serve the market uh, with IoT devices at some point of time, including cars, uh, by the way, so we need it. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, this is not understood everywhere, not in all institutions, not in all larger companies, not in all hierarchical levels with senior decision makers. And that's why I think we really need to push this topic uh, to not allow um, the uh, uh, other regions and organizations outside Europe uh, to be even more ahead uh, in case they are speeding up. As I said, I think the, the Chinese central bank is six to, years, six to eight years ahead. Uh, of uh, the European Central Bank, and actually, um, we should try to close this gap a little. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, but uh, maybe this is more complicated because we have uh, de democratical elections, uh, all the democratical institutions which run, uh, which we have to go through and uh, set up all this uh, digital euro. Maybe that is really that. that no? Do you think in that way or not? Um, what we are currently working on is basically um, producing a conceptual roadmap of what could happen when, because, um, and, and this is very important, I do not want to blame the European Central Bank uh, too much, please don't understand me in this way, because if the European Central Bank would have created the digital euro as of tomorrow, right, then all these efforts would have been wasted, because there is no need 
right now. Yeah, so uh, technical feasibility and also what is the industry demanding and what is retail and machines and IoT devices are demanding needs to fit together. Therefore, it might be okay uh, that the ECB is providing such an infrastructure in a couple of years, but still we need to have a small solution as soon as possible um, for example, an, an API, which is connected to the legacy banking infrastructure uh, to bridge a legacy infrastructure and DLT. This could be a very uh, interesting short-term solution, but it would not be the perfect uh, technological way to build the euro on top of a blockchain network. And in the middle, there could be, um, on the midterm, there could be some kind of banking consortium existing among European banks, for example, also the industrial companies and other who then create the digital euro privately. Yeah, this would also work. So therefore, uh, I think we all um, and in European institutions need to take action. Um, we didn't lose anything, don't get me wrong, because the demand is not there yet, but the demand will be there, and then we need to have uh, interesting solutions ready. And that this could easily be packaged into a step-by-step -step roadmap but the long-term goal would be the infrastructure by the ECB. The mid-term goal would be uh, the privately issued uh, euro, could also be Facebook, Project Lifer, and the short-term version could be some kind of API um, as a gateway between uh, legacy payment infrastructure and DLT network. So what, what exactly infrastructure is necessary to switch from uh, blockchain to digital uh, Euro. Do, do, do we need something else? Do, do, do something must be developed in science and something like that? But what is um, what stops this? I, I think uh, Pavel is uh, much more better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pavel, you can uh, come to this too, discussion. Yeah, but I would actually come from uh, the other point. Um, do the does the world need the instant payments in every asset? Definitely. Can we do it today? Yes, we can. We don't need blockchain to do it today. There are, but there are a couple of issues. Uh, first issue is that the central banks haven't decided uh, what they can do, what they cannot do, what they want to do, what they want to become. Like the Chinese central bank, like yeah, whatever it's called, uh, just has the moral authority within the country to do what they want to do. So they already have a lot of services centralized, and the central bank currency is the most centralized service you can ever imagine. And it's fine because it's their their country. Like uh, other central banks, um, most of them they don't have the um, like legal authority to serve end customers. So they need to define like two-tier schemes and they dig, they basically are tied by many previous regulations. And that's why Chinese are not better in technology. They better because they it's a fully hierarchical structure when one man decides what to do. And this is, again, the other approach to the problem. And the second problem is that the central bank currency kind of assumes that um, we have digital cash. And digital cash uh, presumes anonymity or privacy of payments. And it's a big discussion. Like, should governments allow people to have digital cash? Untraceable or what? Because in, in, the, um, kind of in the community, this is translated into, into discussion, which is useless, I believe, token model or versus account model, where a token is um, kind of believed to be like a programmable mechanism that kind of like a bearable instrument, uh, which accumulates value and can be exchanged without uh, touch to the infrastructure or somehow. An account-based model is assumed to be like a traditional bank uh, model. And from a technical perspective, they are the same. It's like one parameter changed. So, but they have to, like, the central bank have to decide whether they allow um, private transactions or not. And they haven't decided yet. And obviously, uh, because of IML5 and all these regulations, anti money laundering, they incline to have full control over the system. And obviously, that's a big issue because people don't like that. It can't really work, it's, it's hard. 
And uh, uh, the question of blockchain is the last question I would uh, actually raise because it solves it should solve the double spending problem, which again in the system where you have a central bank controlling everything, this problem can be solved much easier than in Bitcoin, for example. In Bitcoin, you indeed have, need to have miners, proof of work, etc. In the central bank currency, you don't need all of that. You can have a single server in the beginning and it will work perfectly. And they can do it today. You don't. They can launch a, digit, uh, a digital bank. And like the whole problem, as I see, is not a technological, but political. The question is, who will be the first global world bank? Whether it's China, and I'm pretty sure that China will allow Ukrainians, Lithuanians, Germans to possess their digital yuan. That's in their interest. That's exactly what the U.S. did with dollars. They let everybody hold dollars, and they sold trillions of them. And now it's a global currency. So now, if we switch to digital, somebody else might be the first one. And um, effectively, um, like U.S., for example, can do the same today. We probably heard about J.P. Morgan attempt to do the digital currency that was like two or three years ago. And effectively, if you go to the United States, you can open a bank account using passport. You don't need any special like U.S. residency or anything. You come from a, any country and you open an account and you do whatever you like. It just you now need to come there physically. If you would be able to do it electronically with like video KYC, and there are already banks in Switzerland that are doing that, that would let everybody in the world open accounts in that U.S. bank. And obviously, transactions within one bank are cost-free; they are instant, so they have the same properties of uh, stablecoin. Just yeah, and obviously, if we can imagine from a technological perspective, if you ask any uh, technical. Uh, like guy, they will tell you that adding securities, it's like very simple. It's a straightforward task. Adding commodities also. The biggest issue is just regulation about certain procedures, etc., etc. So, we are involved in three projects currently with CBDC. One was in, in Ukraine. And these are, they don't know what to do yet. They have FOMO. Um, they, some of them obviously feel this global, you know, coming global war. Who is the next, um, like, what is the next global currency? And they want to participate in that. And they, the problem of blockchain is just to, like, add some technological flavor. But it's all about marketing. So th- this is my opinion, how I see it, yeah, from, yeah, experience. Okay, thank you. So it's very interesting, but I mean, uh, blockchain is very non non efficient. It consumes a lot of electricity. Uh, it can be frauded. The, by a couple of cases of billions were stolen. In Bitcoin, I mean, uh, not, not uh, itself, but is it safe uh, to keep money in that way? I mean, if somebody switches your like, electricity, whatever. So what happens? This is another confusion that people uh, confuse yeah. Bitcoin with blockchain. And yeah. uh, I mean, imagine just for a second if Facebook would just launch a payment system. And by by the way, they have the license, the banking license or payment yeah. license, and they already have the P2P payments, uh, the connected cards in the in Messenger that was what happened two years ago. And now they say Libra, big blockchain, and everybody is distracted. This is like, I don't want to use bad words, but this is just, yeah, what is, what it is. So uh, sending money peer-to-peer is not a hard task within one bank. Daily lives. In many banks, it is hard. But but blockchain, when people hear blockchain, they think about Bitcoin, which requires electricity, which requires miners, attacks. This is not relevant for central bank currency Mm -hmm. at all. The only thing that is, is there from bit that's similar to Bitcoin is the private keys are used to sign transactions, but everything else is different. 
So we don't have any of this problem. And indeed, blockchain is the natural um, way to uh, to digitize assets because, first of all, it says um, let's connect all transactions cryptographically to each other. Makes sense. Then <laughs> let's uh, have the fully transparent history of all the changes that everybody can verify real time. Makes sense. And the third one, it adds the way to synchronize independent databases that belong to different parties who do not trust each other in a way that they know that this is really the truth. And that's it. And, and that's all we need from blockchain. But the mechanism of synchronize, there are many of them. Yeah, and yeah, they right. have been developed for, for years, for, for dozens of years. So it's not a super big deal. Just everybody obsessed, blockchain, blockchain. And I even I am like, I'm a cryptographer. And I, I don't like this movement because it's it basically distracting everybody from the, the way it should be. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, there won't be any problems from technological and uh, it's mainly probably on political scale, right? And uh, we probably should think next what, how to control the supervisor and the money, sure. That's, that's maybe the issues, right? Because uh, who will say, know how much money is in the market? If it will be electronic oh, yeah. or maybe with some mechanism like, like in bitcoins but, uh, or something like that. There, when we have limited number of uh, the number amount, uh, amount of money. So, what, what do you think, Philip? Is is that possible that there will be a lot too much money in this way if we, we will switch to digital money? Well, ideally, yes. if you talk about the digital euro, we should uh, be um, entirely reliant on the policy of the central bank. But this is not sustainable in any way. Why? Because um, it's easy to would issue the digital euro, for example, could also be a um, company collaborating with Facebook Lifestyle, for example, they would have to apply for all required licenses. Um, if they would not behave, then this license is taken away, so they are forced to behave. And this uh, then leads to the fact that only the central bank uh, can uh, basically act uh, with their monetary policy. It's an entirely different case uh, if we talk about alternative forms of money, say Bitcoin, Ethereum, MakerDAO, with the DAI, and all these projects, because they are absorbing purchasing power to some degree, and if uh, they are growing, then at some point of time they might uh, affect um, um, monetary policy. But to be very honest, this is, a, this is very, very, very far away, uh, given the sheer sizes of what's happening in the central banks with their volume of money and taking uh, the crypto markets with Bitcoin and so on, which are technologically absolutely fascinating, but in terms of size, at this point of time, uh, less executable. Good. Yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. So, what if, I think which one th uh, theoretical question, maybe rhetorical question, I would still would have free market if we will have just electronic money. I mean, uh, people are usually concerned what what if uh, it will be stolen. Uh, of course, you can trace it somehow. Some some people are saying that you cannot trace the money if it is completely deliberalized and deliberalized and and so on. So, what what would happen with that? I mean, if people won't have real cash into your hands, how do you feel about this? But to be honest, you know, this, um, this can all easily be sold, uh, but people, you know, like the markets, they don't really understand this yet. They take information transmission. For example, 30 years ago, we transferred information based on paper, right? And on books, and the invoice was printed on paper, right? So they had something, people had something in their hands. And now, uh, if you look at yourself or me and other people, we are getting, I would say, 98% of information electronically via um, email, WhatsApp, and other PDF documents and so on. And uh, we are now starting to not print it out anymore. Like even for a text declaration, you know, that's like the, the most traditional thing where paper is needed and notary stuff. This is now slowly becoming electronic, right? So we do not need to print PDF anymore. It's okay to simply have a PDF document that information simply dematerialized electronically, no physical document, and it's okay for millions of people, right? So there is a huge digital transformation um, uh, uh, happening between physical transfer, physical information processing and now electronic information processing. 
and concerning value, right now, this is very often physical. So take, take uh, the entire area of a society where notaries are um, uh, asking you to sign paper, for example, real estate stuff and so on, you know. <laughs> this is all value printed on paper, and then I sign it, um, and the notary also signs it, and then, uh, like, uh, a legal action has been passed, you know, that's, that's value on paper physically. Same as with physical banknotes and cash and so on. And in my mind, uh, we are right in the beginning where all this value becomes materialized such that at some point of time, but it will take years, at some point of time, it's okay to have value be materialized entirely electronic. And this, of course, would also include um, the digital euro um, to map the currently physical euro on an electronic system. Uh, but it does not affect the monetary policy uh, of the European Central Bank. And companies, of course, if they are underlying uh, relevant licenses in the market, they cannot do whatever they want to. They cannot create euro uh, without any rules, so they have to stick to the rules. And with this, uh, not, not too much changes from this architecture. It's just uh, that whatever they are doing in the future, like banks and other financial organizations, they are doing this entirely in electronically. Okay, yeah, that, that's good. A good, good point. But uh, Pavel, again, I will turn back again to the technological uh, issue. I mean, uh, is it enough current uh, technology? I mean, uh, is it in, enough secure, enough uh, uh, or against uh, cyber uh, crimes and so on? Or do we need to develop something? Because some scientists are speak saying that okay, this technology is some, some something in the middle. Maybe, maybe we need to develop something new, which would be much better and much uh, much more efficient. What do you think? Please excuse me for the uh, comparison, but, you know, existing blockchain technologies like this VMX call application comparing to Zoom. Uh, it's like, um, it's, it's still in a prototype mode, even though huge companies develop that, like IBM and other big comp companies, it is still early days. And this is fine because you have, you can't really develop a technology within three years and uh, expect it to be fully mature. But it is enough to make, um, like POCs, MVPs and try it in the field. And uh, it happens with all innovations. And initially, every uh, innovation has only limited uh, use and has its own constraints, but then being developed, and it, it could be, um, it could become really great. And um, like existing blockchain technology should, the, the main issue, I would say, is still usability from an even developer point of view. Uh, it's still hard to uh, take components from each different projects and recombine them. It's still hard to, to change the cryptogra cryptography um, behind the blockchain because every country has its own cryptography. Most of the countries have their own cryptographic standards and uh, key length and so on and so forth. So European Union very widely uses RSA, which is far outdated standard comparing to you, you see the RSA that's used in blockchain, in, like in Bitcoin and other projects. So it is very, like, yeah, very early days, but this is fine uh, because um, until all the legal questions will be resolved and procedural questions, uh, then technology will be much more mature. And uh, like, it's five to ten years to we'll have pretty good tech. So that's my opinion. Okay, so probably, maybe, I mean, uh, some uh, scientific project should be run first to check if this is enough what we have, and I'm, I'm, or I'm mistaken. Um, the, the, no, this is hard. They, there are many initiatives running parallel. You cannot start yeah, your sure. bicycle for five years and cool. decide to jump on it. You need to ride it from the first day. And uh, that's exactly the, com the countries and companies that understand the future value of digital signature, everything. They should start today because in five years they will be... You cannot wait for internet to fully penetrate the world and then launch your website. Amazon launched their website in 1996, if I'm not mistaken. And now they kind of yeah, conquered the, the e-commerce market. And uh, I also wanted to comment on the previous question. And I fully agree with Philip that, yeah, 
it was paper and now it's digital, people will do get used to it. This is fine. They now do it through games, through nail banks, and so on. What uh, existing technology lacks is proper uh, data integrity protection. So if you have a digital data, even if it's video, you never know whom it comes from. Because you can fake it if it's just numbers easy, even if it's video or voice. You don't know if it's really me. There are deep fake technologies that can fake my words using all previous videos. And that would be used in the future as weapons. So the only way to prove the source of digital data is digital signature and proper key management. And for that, already public key infrastructure are in place. European Union is really good at that and like Estonia is like the, probably the most known example where people vote using their uh, passports where cryptographic uh, keys are embedded so exactly, yeah. these tools need to be um, widely used and then we will be able to have a piece of digital data um, signed in a way that every person will be able to verify it now it's not the case so people have to get used to it first and then like revolution will occur. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Yes, of course. Now, of course, many, many uh, fintech companies are working on that, how to identify persons, uh, how to not uh, fake yourself and, and so on. So that that's, 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 that's current uh, problem maybe. Because, yeah, you can fake yourself uh, by creating your uh, identity and so on. You can open bank accounts sometimes, uh, but of course, but you need some, some, some proofs for that. So, so yeah, of course. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, what, what we should talk about next? Uh, because what is the future, of course, of this uh, area? I mean, what, what should be done first? Uh, of course, political uh, decision, right? Uh, lawmakers should do something. What, what, what's next, uh, Philip? What do you think? You, you've wrote many papers, many uh, in many uh, pages, uh, gave many speeches. What do you think? What, what should be done next? Uh, I, I think uh, the most important point is to uh, the education on behalf of uh, the industry and financial organization, uh, because um, also, as Pavel said, um, the European Central Bank is basically the digital euro that's and last project. You know, this is not going overnight, it takes years. Uh, as I said previously, the midterm solution uh, could be um, a privately organized consortium creating the digital euro, for example, on DLP. This is what I think will happen. But if so, then all these companies, uh, especially industrial companies, you know, I now have Porsche, Daimler, BMW, Siemens uh, in mind, and of course other ones, they need to understand what they can do with the digital euro. Where are the uh, uh, new business models? How is it digitally transforming their business, including especially the chances? And where there are chances, there should be some demand for it. And then there should be education within these companies. Uh, but I feel that uh, the demand for the digital program of the euro has not yet uh, been uh, emphasized in a very systematic way, such that uh, policymakers are actually hearing that there is a huge demand. And if you talk to companies, uh, uh, Bosch, for example, uh, like the IoT company Bosch, they are really demanding this because, because they would like to connect their sensors to an um, Euro blockchain network, let's call it that way, such that the sensors can engage in transactions. But in Germany, uh, that's in my mind the most advanced larger industrial companies, uh, much many of the machinery companies there are in Germany, they are just at the beginning of understanding what's possible there. And therefore, I think um, knowledge transfer, education on behalf of such companies uh, would be very important um, to be done by themselves, of course, but maybe also to be um, pushed a little bit uh, by politics, uh, by European institutions, uh, and so on. The society should should do something. I mean, uh, there should be some discussions in every country, probably, and uh, go go very fast. Because uh, if, we, if politicians will decide that we we want it, and let's do it. So they first must convince their their uh, citizens, uh, right? Uh, because how how to prove that this is necessary? I mean, big companies is fine, but the daily life is is different a little bit from. Uh, 
I mean, old ladies, uh, let's say your, my grandma or whatever, uh, could couldn't understand. What, what, so, so discussion in the in a, with people should be done too, probably, right? Uh, yes and no, uh, because you know, I think the demand needs to be uh, developed. Um, very often, uh, people don't know yet what is possible there. You know, at the end of the day, what, is, what I find is important is that for me, as a human being, I have my one and two, one to three. Uh, Online banking app, I'm perfectly fine. I can transact the euro uh, if I wish more or less in real time. That's fine. Uh, I can alternatively also purchase Bitcoin if I wish. I can pay with euro. I can transfer here and there. That's 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 fine, right? Uh, I don't there not more needs to be uh, done here for now, right? Right. Uh, but uh, uh, the future is basically in my mind the machine economy. And the machine economy means that hundreds of millions of devices will be connected to the internet. This is already happening. And a, a, a share of these devices will be also connecting um, at this payment network. So take the autonomous car. Yeah, everybody knows Tesla and so on. Autonomous car can right now drive autonomously. But it cannot really decide autonomously yet. That's AI. And it cannot do controlling and accounting uh, yet, such that it can live economically viable, right? At some point of time, the, the autonomous car will become a small profit center. It will get money from transporting people and goods, and it will pay money for electricity and calls and software updates and so on. So I think this is this is something which is at this point of time just existing on PowerPoint slides. It's existing here and there on very early Twitter social sites. But companies like Ford and the others I mentioned, they are really trying to push this topic to have like uh, the growing machine economy built on a good infrastructure such that they can develop and sell their product. And I think this is the, the, the huge market which will come to us in the next uh, three to ten years. Uh, that's the IoT, that's the machine economy, and, and that's things we can't really imagine yet. It's hundreds of millions of devices on the entire planet. At some point of time, that's uh, that's more devices connected to the internet than human beings on the planet. That's massive, and that's economic growth coming from there. And talking about human beings again, uh, I think in Europe, concerning payment needs, uh, we have everything what we need as human beings right now. That's fact. That's fine. Uh, it's problems are coming elsewhere from the negative interest rates and so on. But they are, don't forget these 1.7 billion people on the planet who do who do not have what we are having. For example, the ability to send their money, is, uh, the ability uh, to store money up until tomorrow or next year. Or the ability to access money in case you have to use your country due to migration. Yeah, that's now the developing and, uh, and uh, emerging countries. Here you have people uh, who are not financially included yet, uh, not at least in very base functions. That's exactly uh, where the technology of blockchain, in my mind, can in detail. And uh, uh, the LIFA project tries to really tackle this. Let's see how they are doing there. Let's see what they are telling us will also be done in reality. Yeah. Uh, like I have some criticism of course, uh, but I think these are the huge possibilities DLT and blockchain can potentially help solve the machine economy with hundreds of millions of devices and financial inclusions uh, 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 according to, to LIFA with 1.7 billion people on the planet uh, which could be helped with basic financial services. Right? Do you have any estimations of how much that could uh, benefit the economy, sovereign countries for, from such a uh, digital money? I mean, I think this is the key question which needs to be answered, right? Um, but you can't answer this with a quickly uh, written medium article for really estimating the effect. Uh, on the machine economy, on, uh, on economic growth, for example, or on, on the same financial inclusion. Um, uh, you need to have solid studies being done. This costs a lot of work, it costs a lot of intelligence. And I think, um, in case you talk about first step, I think um, these things need to be investigated. And they need to be investigated, you know, with solid done analysis, but they also have, and it's in my mind more important, they need to be investigated by really uh, visible prototype to have a car connected to the 
Bewegung helfe, Sensor Collective Bewegung to help people transacting in developing countries with money which they can store up until next year without any inflation locally and stuff. So, um, we, yes, we need to have paper here to be written uh, as studies done in a solid way. This needs budget that's lacking at this point of time, but we also have to have real life uh, prototypes, uh, real life projects, uh, which are really showcasing what's possible here. Okay, this is, this is a good point. I mean, to, to prove that uh, this is really good, a good, good thing, and so uh, that's. Uh, Sovereign countries should probably do some some in this direction. Okay, so let's think now about uh, what people could do and what we could do to to have it or to not have it. Uh, if somebody will decide that in some countries, I mean uh, that they don't want it. Of course, that depends on the central bank, but uh, European central bank. But uh, what what should be do, done first? I mean uh, to have it. Of course, some changes in the law, right? Uh, some policy changes, but. Uh, What's next? I, um, I would love to hear several opinions here, but uh, uh, maybe from my side, I would say here, what is needed, you know, uh, uh, that the, it's not really depending on the European Central Bank right now, because if they are starting now, it will be here until their product is launched, right? But they need to start. But I think we are not really dependent on the European Central Bank on this regard right now. But if we would like to have a solution here, then in my mind, companies uh, need to act. Companies need to standardize uh, yeah. uh, APIs, adapters, and so on. This would be needed, and uh, such that this can be done, we need to have budget uh, to be able to do it. And uh, budget, in my mind, is the crucial part here. Budget is very, often very scarce these days in the blockchain area, and the reason for this is uh, that mostly education uh, with uh, people in, 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 in public authorities, but also in industrial uh, corporations, um, needs to really be uh, in yeah, so we need to, at this point of time, that it's so early, we need to really try education. So, so you mean some small push, push from 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 uh, from industry should be done, and probably when uh, countries would start thinking about that. Uh, of course, some some already thinking, but I mean, uh, in general, uh, we, we have seen before in some of our, our project that uh, it's not very unified uh, strategy. It's not very unified. Even the level of knowledge in, in Europe, in, in digital uh, uh, money, in digital uh, in fintech, in, in general. I mean, so so that should be some some small push from 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 uh, from industry, probably, right? Uh, yes, but it's also an individual thing, you know. Like uh, uh, I, uh, to be honest, I think people need to learn programming. Um, more people, less people starting less business and more IT. Yeah. That, that would uh, I, I don't know if it solves all problems and takes them all chances. Um, but um, but like the, the, the business person in the future needs to understand at least a little bit of technology and like now speaking of blockchain. And I would argue that the business guy and the same is true for lawyers and law students. And business students, uh, the, the, the connection between a business guy and a technological guy in the future is, for example, the smart contract. Yeah? A business guy will not and cannot understand cryptography. That's probably not possible. But he can and should understand smart contracts. That's the intersection uh, between a technical guy and a business guy in the future. And if business person just needs to business, that PowerPoint, and if the, uh, the, law, the lawyer and the law just into his paragraph and not taking the intersection into to other domains like you know the smart contract for example um, then uh, then this is this is pretty uh, sad and then we cannot really understand what this technology brings to us and that's why I, uh, I, I if I could choose uh, then I would try to push education exactly in these domains okay Pablo what do you think uh, some concluding remarks maybe yeah I agree with Philip regarding education is definitely like turning the point yeah. with every in innovation. Um, I see one, a couple of issues. Um, the one is that people are indeed asking, like Philip said, uh, how we can earn on that. And the answer is maybe you shouldn't expect any er direct earnings from switching from paper to a digital form, but rather you should uh, expect that friction is reduced. It's like uh, you cannot directly earn on email, but when the world changed from the physical post to 
to email and business communications, then obviously it increased the speed of communications and amount of communications that you can possibly do during the day and a week. And uh, I don't think anybody calculated b- before email was uh, like kind of used everywhere. What is the GDP um, growth, etc.? And they considered something and discussed at the government level. No, probably it was every company installed the email in their own ter- servers, and then it happened that okay, you can send emails between organizations, and uh, no government body actually approved that or rejected or correct it was developed really and it may have like with money obviously it's a little bit different because uh, until now government is the kind of has the legal right to issue money but it may change maybe like in 100 years but it it probably will change because government had the power to control religion or information very like not too long ago and now it's changed and we see how like um, the economy progressed during this time so obviously now there is a competition from like bitcoin or the tether uh, because people start using it it's just simpler uh, and uh, one sign of it people started to take bribes in cryptocurrencies it means it's a good it's like good ways of payment and it's yeah, yeah. um and then obviously governments see okay if people like this freedom of exchange um, the easiness of it then we should come with our own version of it and that's why china is very active in the u.s because obviously the superpowers don't want to lose their positions or china wants to increase so and this is all again a political game um, and regarding the purely technical perspective the existing money if you look at them like as it is, only person can initiate a transfer. Whether it's a phone call or it's a push of the button in the app or something like that, but it's kind of considered to be a per action of a person. And if we switch to, like, again, digital, future digital currency, CBDC or whatever crypto, uh, it's assumed that we have digital identity and it can be initiated with a signature. And you can program that. That's exactly what we are talking about, the programmable euro. And it means that machines can initiate these payments. Now they technically can do, I can pay for whatever Netflix with my credit card automatically, but that's kind of, it's not me who is paying, it's rather they who are fetching money. Um, I haven't, I just added, I gave them the key to my you know vaults and they take money and they can take as much as I have on the credit card, but they don't do it because they will be like punished. In the new paradigm, it's not possible. Um, it's like the application or whatever piece of code signs every transaction. And this is uh, like a push approach instead of pull. And it can indeed allow the inclusion of all machines into the economy and then therefore it will grow significantly. Uh, and private companies can do that, public companies or governments can do that. Effectively, uh, the the nature of the asset is not changed. It's still money. It's a fiat, it's fiat, it's commodity, commodity. It's just the, the technical infrastructure to initiate payments and do audits is changed. And it's you don't actually need to change any laws for that. I mean, maybe you can, but uh, uh, very wise countries, and Germany is among them, is not writing down the specifics of the technology that's being used to do something. So like a couple of years ago, there was a law that allowed companies to do kind of a public IPOs um, using blockchain. Uh, so issuing securities and selling them. And therefore, you don't actually need the lawyer, uh, the bank, the broker or custodian. Blockchain can act as a custodian. But law doesn't say... Um, like you know, whether it should be this blockchain or that blockchain, public or private, it's just as if the client can do this and this and that and verify certain things, then it's kind of you achieve your goal and you're allowed to do so. And this is a crucial result. So I would say governments should focus on a digital identity, open APIs, and certain requirements to transparency. And okay. then yeah, the private companies will do the rest. We will come up with best tools, 
Yeah. And <laughs> okay, thanks, you cannot tell us which technology to use. Yeah. That's that's. No, of course, uh, uh, that, that's, that's up to, to our scientists and, and technology companies uh, what, what to present and what, what, what is the best one. Okay, guys, uh, thank you, Philip, and thank you, Pavel, for this discussion. I, I'm, I'm nearly convinced that this is a good, good thing. <laughs> I was a little bit skeptic about this before, but uh, now it's, it's, it sounds very nice, and uh, I hope this will uh, lead us uh, to a better future, better, better currency, but better uh, programmable and digital euro, I mean. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> okay.